I'm so confused about God's will for my life. I don't know who God wants me to marry. I don't know what job I should take. I don't know what decision I need to make. I'm so lost about God's will. I really don't know what my next step should be. All right, guys, I don't know if you've ever been in a situation or in this place in your life as a Christian where you are so confused about what God's will is, you know, and like, what God wants you to do, you know, I feel like this is one of the most common things that God gets asked by his children. It's like, God, what is your will? What do you want me to do? What do you want me to focus on? And here's the thing, I think at the same time, there's a lot of misconception about what God's will actually is. And so I don't know if you guys saw my short that was circulating that I uploaded about, you know, the E equals MC squared of God's will saying God's will equals God's method times God's timing, the power of you first seeking the kingdom of God. So, but in today's video, I really wanted to expound on this and really talk a little bit more in depth into what does God's will actually mean, you know, because it's almost like a Christian cliche, if you will, you know, everybody be talking about God's will, but we're not really deconstructing and really going into the details of what that actually means. Now, I've really prayed about this, that I can bring you guys more clarity into this topic, you know, because here's the thing, when I was a younger Christian, I was so obsessed with God's will, <laughs> like seriously. And I think I drove myself crazy because I just had this constant fear in my heart that I somehow was going to miss God's will for my life or you know somehow I was gonna do something to screw up God's will for my life like I was literally almost like low-key paranoid but now that I've been <laughs> a little bit over a decade into my faith and God's really grown some things in my life and I've learned to see how God actually moves in my life and things that he's taught me so from this sort of wealth of I don't know, wisdom, but I guess I just want to share with people who might be also struggling with this question, Christians who really truly care about the will of God for their life. So let's jump into it. When it comes to understanding God's will, I absolutely believe that there are some things that I would call as preconditions to God's will, okay? And let me go a little bit into what I mean by that. So basically preconditions is like certain things, certain criteria that needs to be met to even go into the conditions of that thing. So kind of like before you can, you know, get a house, you know, you have to have a certain credit score. You can't even talk about giving you a house loan, right? Until we see that these preconditions have been met, right? So in the same way, when it comes to God's children, you know, wanting to, to really have his will, his guidance, his leadership in their life, God can't do that for you unless you're willing to submit to these preconditions. There's two preconditions that I really sort of, I thought about, you know, and really got sort of put on my heart to share with you guys. So first precondition is if you want God's will for your life, you need to surrender. And what do I mean by that? You know, obviously salvation is a whole different topic. You know, when we talk about, you know, when you're saved, when by grace, you know, accept, you know, you enter into a relationship with God, you know, so yeah, that's a form of surrender. But what I mean, surrender all the aspects, all the areas of your life, you know, surrender is a whole act. It's kind of like whenever you're getting married, right? Like you don't hear people at the altar saying, you know, I give you 50% of myself and I'm going to keep 50% to myself. I'm just going to give you part of me, but I'm not going to give my whole self to you. No, that's not how it works, right? Like you, you hear them saying, you know, until death do us part, you know, in sickness and health, you know, like no matter what happens, I'm giving myself 110% you i'm completely yours right so in the same way when it comes to god and our personal relationship with god is like whenever you enter into a relationship with god you're 110 percent giving yourself to him you're surrendering all the areas of your life we sing you know during praise and stuff like that you know i surrender to you whatever you know but have we actually done that with our life have we truly submitted ourselves to christ fully no matter the cost, no matter the sacrifice, no matter what comes, are you 110% submitted to God and his will for your life, wherever he leads you, no matter how much you don't understand where he's guiding you, but are you submitted to him? And is every area of your life, you know, like I'm talking about your relationship with money, your relationship with sex. And here's the thing, a good example of this, it's kind of like, you know, people want like, God, I want you to write a beautiful story. <laughs> you know what I mean? But like, are you truly giving God full permission to be the author of your story, right? Like, are you allowing God to be the author? You know, a lot of us, a lot of us, we want to be the author of our story. We want to be writing our story. And we kind of want God in our story as this genie bottle, right? Like, God, I want this. And you know, and you're my genie. So make that happen, right? Like, somehow we think, how can I get God to fulfill my will, right? You know, it's not me surrendering to God's will. It's not me 
you know, surrendering to the authorship of God, you know, in my life. It's more like I'm going to be the author. I'm going to be writing my story and how I can plug in God into it and make him the genie of making all things happen how I want them. You know, it's not how it works. So asking yourself that question. Another way I can think about it is like, you know, either you're on this earth to advance your kingdom, to build up your kingdom. There's plenty of people who are like having their goals and ambitions. You know, they want to become influencers, have more money, you know, like they're driven by success and all these things, you know, they're building their kingdoms, you know. But if you're a child of God, are you advancing his kingdom here on earth, you know, rather than building up for yourself as if you're going to live here forever, right? No. So so that's what I mean, you know, ask yourself that deeper questions, you know, have you met that precondition of have I surrendered truly my life to Christ? And and not just in terms of salvation, but in every area of my life. And when it comes to surrender, you know, Jesus himself said this in Matthew 16 24 jesus said whoever wants to be my disciple must deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me for whoever wants to save their life will lose it but whoever loses their life for me will find it so in a sense jesus says you know if you really want my will for your life you need to deny yourself you need to take up your cross and follow me and that's how you will come to understand what my will is for your life so you know that is a must So now let's go into precondition number two. So precondition number two is what I say, you have to have faith. You have to live by faith. Unless you have faith, you will never be able to really see God's will work in your life. So in James 1, 5 through 8, it says here, If any of you lacks wisdom, you should ask God who gives generously to all without finding fault, and it will be given to you. But when you ask... You must believe and not doubt because the one who doubts is like the wave of the sea blown and tossed by the wind. That person should not expect to receive anything from the Lord. Such a person is double-minded and unstable in all they do. So key word here says, when you ask, you must believe and not doubt. So you have to have faith. So what we see here is like, if you lack wisdom, if you truly want to see God's will for your life, right? If you're asking for wisdom. So in a sense, asking for God's wisdom is asking for God's will for your life, right? You cannot be a double-minded man or woman because you are unstable in all your ways. You know, you're not focused. You're, 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 you're kind of like all over the place. That's what James says. And I love how straight up James is. So there's another verse in Hebrews 11, where it says in Hebrew 1, 6, it says, and without faith, it is impossible to please God because anyone who comes to him must believe that he exists and that he rewards those who earnestly seek him. So you have to have faith. You have to believe. And when I say you have to have faith, it's not just this passive belief, because here's the thing. You're going to go through a many, many months, maybe many years, maybe where you don't see how God's working something out. You know, you don't see how God is. And, and maybe even you might feel like you're losing. You feel like you're, you're, you're like, you know, nothing's making sense. You're so lost and confused. But, you know, in that, in that confusion, unless you're a person of faith, you will start to feel like, okay, I've got to take things into my own hands. I have to fix this up because God clearly doesn't know what he's doing, you know, because God's clearly not making things happen for me. You're going to start leaning into your own understanding. You're going to start taking things into your hands because you're not seeing God move. You're not seeing God do the things, you know, that you want him to do in your life. But here's the thing. That's why it's so important to have faith. Faith is a hope in things that you cannot see. You trust the character of God. You trust who God is, who he said he is, and His in, the, in his providential will that he's going to bring the right things in the proper time. That's a person of faith. That's a person who is able to look into the negatives of the circumstance, even though it defies their logic, even though you don't see how God's going to, you know, like bring about a deliverance in this area. But you, by faith, you keep on persevering. For instance, like the children of Israel, right? God brought them to the sea and then, and they're like, you know, why'd you bring us here, you know? And God wanted them to have great faith, you know? Instead, they're like, well, take us back, take us back, right? But God brought them to that place so he could perform a miracle, so he could deliver them gloriously, right? So a lot of times, God will bring you into situations where you don't see a way out, where you don't see how logically you can get out of the circumstance, but he wants you to have faith, to believe, to continue do not doubt who he is and that his word is true, you know, and, and somehow in a way that you could 
would least expect he's going to answer your prayer, you know, or, you know, and he will clarify what the will is, right? Maybe regarding a certain circumstance. But So those are the two preconditions, you know, are you surrendered and are you submitted to God? And the precondition number two, are you a person of faith? Or you're a person of just sight. Now let's jump into the actual conditions, you know, of God's will. How God's will is, you know, orchestrated in our lives. God's will is never without God's method. You have to surrender your logical ways. You have to surrender your human ways. God has his own way of doing things. You know, we are such linear creatures. We want, we want point A to point B. You know, we want things to make sense. But God's plan is often non-linear. <laughs> God's plan is nothing like you would probably expect, right? God's ways are his ways, you know, his methods are his methods. And if you want God's will for your life, then you have to surrender methodology to him. You have to allow him to be God and in his ultimate wisdom and providence do the things the way he wants to do things in your life. And the verse that I absolutely love like a lot is like in Isaiah 55, for my thoughts are not your thoughts and neither are your ways my ways, declares the Lord. As the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than yours and my thoughts than your thoughts. And here's the promise. As the rain and the snow come down from heaven and do not return it without watering the earth and making it bud and flourish so that it yields seed for the sower and bread for the eater, so is my word that goes out of my mouth. It will not return to me empty, but will accomplish what I desire and achieve the purpose for which I sent it. So, you know, this is what God says, you know, if you're asking for God's ways, for God's method, right? Like God's saying, here's the promise. It's like my methods work, you know, my methodologies work. I don't send out my word and it comes back to me empty. My word always comes back fulfilling what it, what I've intended to fulfill. So, you know, trusting God's ways is surrendering your own understanding. Stop leaning to your own understanding. Stop taking the matter into your hands and let God control the circumstance and allow him to do his things, his ways for your life. You know, even if those ways seem contrary to your logic, contrary to your feelings, contrary to all kinds of things, you know? So now let's go into the second condition, which is this, God's timing. You have to, if you want God's will in your life, you know, not only you have to surrender to God's methodology, his methods, his ways, but also you have to surrender to his timing. He is God. He is sovereign. He knows when to bring the right thing, you know, because, and here's the thing, God's will is not so much what God gives as much as what God does in our hearts before God, before God's will becomes every a thing that he gives in your life or provides in your life. God's will is something that he does in your heart, in your character for years sometimes, you know, and we have a hard time understanding that, but we need to grasp that and take, and things take time, you know, think about this. Even people always be like, okay, where is my person, you know, like that I want to marry, you know, like think about it. God's not only dealing with you, right? And growing you out, but maybe God is also, right? Growing them out, you know? So like, even if you're ready, right? Maybe they're not ready. So you have to understand that God not only works with you and his great providence, he also works with, you know, this other person with all kinds of things, you know, if, this is just to give an example of relationships, because this is a very common one, where people always ask about God's will for a spouse, right? So that you understanding that, you know, that nothing's gonna miss you. So many Christians have such FOMO. You no, know, if I'm not there, God's will is gonna go down the drain or something, right? No, calm down. God is sovereign. God is omnipotent. He knows, you know, just surrender the timing to his providence if you want to see his will in your life. And a great biblical example of this is in the book of Habakkuk. And here's Habakkuk, you know, this is, was in the time before the Babylonians completely destroyed Judah, you know, before the kingdom was split. And Habakkuk was prophesying about the oncoming destructions and the Babylonians were really, really doing some violent, horrendous things, you know, and Habakkuk was like, God, how can you tolerate this injustice, you know, when are you going to answer us, you know, and in his crying out of his heart, he was t asking God these questions. And, and I love this, the response that God gives him. So it says here in Habakkuk chapter two, verse one to verse three, and this is Habakkuk saying, I will stand at my watch and station 
myself on the rampart. I will look to see what he will say to me and what answer I am to give to this complaint. And then it says titled, The Lord's Answer. Then the Lord replied, Write down the revelation and make it plain on tablet, so that a herald may run with it. For the revelation awaits an appointed time, it speaks of the end, and it will not prove false. Though it linger, wait for it, it will certainly come and will not delay. I love this. You know, it says, you know, write this on the tablet. My revelation, even though sometimes it looks like it's taking a long time to come, it will come. Once it's it's time for it to be fulfilled, it will be fulfilled, right? So in the same way, we need to understand that God is never late. God is on time. It's just God's has a specific timing for everything in our lives. God knew you before you even knew yourself, like he says in Jeremiah uh, 1, before you were formed in the womb, I knew you. That's what God said to Jeremiah, I knew you. God knew you before even you were conscious of your own existence. So God knows when is the right time for everything if you trust him, if you believe in him, if you surrender your life for his will, you know? So this is the second condition that you need to surrender the timing to God's will. You know, it's not on your time, but it's on his. And are you truly willing to accept that? And now the last thing I want to say is that, you know, in the midst of like pursuing a specific God's will for your life, you know, there is the revealed will of God that is revealed to all the believers, to all Christians, which is to seek first in the kingdom of God. And are you pursuing that? Are you truly depending on God on a daily basis? Are you seeking him in prayer? Are you seeking him, you know, in worship? You know, are you full of thanksgiving? Are you sharing the gospel with other people? Are you pursuing the matters of your calling for the kingdom? Are you doing all of those things? And are you doing that 100%? That's my other question is that if you want a will of God, first and foremost, seek the kingdom of God. Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Are you constantly on a daily basis? basis spending time with Jesus and growing spiritually, growing in the word, growing in knowledge, growing in wisdom, you know, is this happening in you? Because if that's the, the, literally the Bible says, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and everything else will be added on to you. Everything else about his other will for your life will be brought into. Are you running after the things of God? Because if you want the will of God, you need to be pursuing the revealed will of God for your life on a daily basis. And that is the call for all Christians, for all disciples of Jesus Christ, you know, is to seek first the kingdom, to to know him deeper and make him known to other people. So I don't know, guys, I hope this was helpful in clarifying this whole thing about God's will, because sometimes, like I said in that, in that little short, it's like God's will can be this unicorn that we all are chasing, you know, and we don't know what it is, you know, like we don't really have a true grasp on it. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching this video. Hopefully this video was edifying and helpful. You know, if you like this video, you know, like it, you know, leave a comment. You know, if you're new to this channel, subscribe to my channel and I'll see you guys in the next video.